Okay, so with every single digital fabrication shootout that we do, we always try to find the best machine in every single category. And this machine here, the Prusa i3 Mark III, isn't that. So what makes this machine so special that we want to that we want to talk about it today? So while it may not have been one of our top scores this year, it likely will be one of the top scores coming up. Uh, it, it's only down by a few points. Um, and the reason for that is, is the unit that we had was actually one of the first ones that they made. And so they weren't totally done tweaking the software. Uh, this one we just recently got, this is a production unit that we're videoing now, uh, and we're gonna put it back through its paces and see how it actually turns out. But the Prusa team is still working on the firmware for it. This has a lot of really exciting features that are really pushing what the industry is going to be doing. Uh, Pr Joe Prusa has been known and made his name by improving RepRap machines, and they really went a long ways on this one uh, that is really gonna make people excited. Now you mentioned the software, and the software on this machine is really quite special, particularly the, not necessarily the software you use on your computer, but the software that lives inside the control board of this machine. Yeah, the firmware on the machine, I just got an update this morning because they're still working on it. But the firmware on this machine really brings in a lot of new features, especially around the new board that they have running also and the new stepper drivers that they're using. Now what's unusual for most 3D printers is this machine actually doesn't have any end stops in it. Right. The new stepper drivers, the Trinamics, mean they don't need end stops. The stepper drivers themselves are able to detect when the machine runs into something and they use that as the end stops. But they're also able to use that to detect while printing if the machine has collided with anything and pause the print to ensure if you have any curling that you get a pause or, you know, if your cat walks onto your printer and accidentally knocks into it, which I've had happen, uh, it, it pauses the machine for you. Yeah, and this, uh, this sort of fail-safe also works for things like filament jams or like extruder snags or anything like that. Right, and they, they double down on that. While they can still test some things on the extruder motor, they're also added an optical sensor to, the make, to make sure that your filament is actually extruding. One of our favorite things about the previous generation, the Mark II, was the print bed. Uh, the PEI sheet just kind of made sure that your prints pretty much always stuck. And they've done one better on, on the print bed for this machine. Right. The Mark III still has PEI, but no longer is it a sticker that you stick down. It's actually spray coated onto the bed. Oh, and the bed's removable. So the bed itself is spring steel. Once you get done with the print, you pop it off, cools down really quickly once it's off the machine, give it a little flex, and your part pops right off. When you're ready to go, just line it up with the peg, and it magnets right in place. Couldn't be simpler, and a lot more robust than, than previous beds. And there's a couple other nice things about the machine as you start to look around it. Um, the Mark II, for all of its high points, a lot of people yeah, kind of thought less of it. That frame was made of, of threaded rod. This uses aluminum extrusions which if you're building this from a kit should mean that you're, you're gonna be able to get this machine uh, square and true a lot easier. Right, on the Mark II, they helped you with the squareness in that it was the first machine that not only did a, a calibration for leveling the build plate, it actually did a calibration for squareness. So if you got it close enough, it would compensate and it would tell you how close you are. But with the aluminum extrusion now, everything's bolt in, it's gonna be stiffer, it's gonna be more robust and we're excited. So they just announced this machine at Maker Faire New York 2017. And they announced it that it's currently being sold just as a kit and its sale price is what, $750? $749, which is only $50 more than what they were selling the Mark II for. Which for all the capabilities of the machine is really not a terribly high asking price. No, I, I, I think it's a great price point to have something with this many features in it. It's gonna be popular. So while this wasn't the highest scoring machine in the shootout, it has tons of features that we're super excited about. And while some of them are a little bit finicky right now, uh, as, they, as Prusa continue to develop the software, we're really excited to see how much more refined the machine will become. Yeah, that team is really dedicated. There's no doubt that everything will be sorted out when this machine starts to ship in November. Uh, we're excited about it. We had a special delivery of the beta unit here at the shootout. 
uh, and the team was unbelievably, unbelievably excited when they were able to see the features involved. So between the price and the reputation for quality that Prusa machines have, you really can't go wrong with this machine. Yeah, absolutely. Get your pre-orders in.